here are two people highly educated, seemingly successful, working at Google. It's a dream job for many people, and yet you still have what looks like a domestic violence incident. A Google software engineer is found beaten to death in her upscale California home. Investigators say the suspect is her own husband. Was there a pattern of this? Was there something that triggered this particular event? First responders on the scene found Siwoon Yu beaten to death in her own home. They found her husband, Loren Chen, covered in blood spatter. But still, so many unanswered questions. What did co-workers see in that kind of inter interaction? Did they hear them arguing? Did they ever see her afraid of him? The gruesome scene was discovered when police responded to a welfare check at the couple's Santa Clara, California home. Inside, they found Yu with severe blunt force injuries to her head. Chen was found with blood all over his body, scratches along his arms, and a swollen hand. According to court docs, Chen explained this away when he, quote, replied, I punched my wife. They asked him when this happened, and he replied, yesterday. In those same court documents, a Santa Clara police detective went on to write in part, quote, Based on my training and experience, I believe suspect Chen murdered his wife by striking her in the head repeatedly. Despite the overwhelming evidence that Chen is responsible, attorney and trial consultant Dina Saig Dahl says his defense team will likely dispute that right away. His first defense will probably be that he didn't do it, right? That there was maybe an intruder. Uh, maybe he was the one fighting off the intruder. That would be, I don't know if they're going to, his defense will be able to find any kind of evidence to support that. But that would be maybe your initial defense was he wasn't the right person. P possibly um, self-defense he can claim or some sort of mental incapacity at the time he can play, um, could claim. It, it's these types of defenses that we're likely to see if, if this proceeds to trial. Chen is now charged with his wife's murder, and so far, investigators believe they know how to label the crime. The fact that it's possibly a domestic violence case would help the prosecution in terms of motive. And in order to kind of flush that out, the investigation would have to show then maybe that there was some sort of pattern of abuse, that they had talked to people about this abuse. Um, did people ever see injuries on her before? Usually in a domestic violence situation, to get to the extent of actually death, there would have not been the first time the spouse had abused the other spouse. And so in order to kind of bring that into the trial, they're going to have to show that they have evidence other than just the killing that, you know, he was indeed abusing her. So in order to determine some of that, do you think they'll go back and look at their past emails or text messages, their phone logs, things like that? Yes, absolutely. We've seen this before um, in other cases, and your viewers will have seen this before. Well, they'll, sh they'll see text messages, and a lot can be shown even uh, through text messages. Was he controlling? Uh, was he spying on her? Was he overly jealous? Um, did she sound fearful in some of her texts? Uh, was she telling him to stop? So they're going to collect all of that, like you said, um, texts, photos, emails, any kind of communication between the two of them that can show what type of relationship they had. Before the murder, a friend had dinner with both Chen and Yu. He reported Chen was acting off, so much so that he went over to the couple's house the next day. That's when the friend saw Chen, quote, motionless, on his knees, had his hands in the air, and was staring blankly. That's when the friend requested a welfare check. A friend had dinner with the couple the night before the murder, and they noted that Chen seemed kind of off. Is that something that investigators are going to look into the Last Supper, so to speak? Absolutely. And in order to kind of find out what was happening in their relationship, they will definitely question their friends and people around them. And to me, the fact that she was so worried about him, him seeming off that she kind of did a welfare check on them the next day or requested a welfare check on them the next day almost raises a red flag to me because I don't know if everybody would automatically assume something horrible had happened just because somebody had seemed off the night before and maybe you couldn't reach them that morning, which leads me to think that it's possible this person had seen other instances of um, where she was worried uh, what may be happening with them. And, and that in itself is, is 
definitely something that investigators will look into more. Saeed Dahl says Chen's reaction to stare off blankly after his wife's murder could be fuel for his defense. The fact that he wasn't trying to clean it up or trying to escape, there's this idea that maybe he was in some sort of PTSD and frozen. I would think his defense would try to argue that that maybe started, you know, before the violence broke out, that he was in some sort of blackout, uh, you know, didn't know what he was doing. And maybe there's something in there that they can kind of justify why legally that would help, you know, him not be convicted of murder. I mean, even if you're in a blackout and you kill somebody, that doesn't exactly, you know, get you off. off. But if there's other things leading into it, either as mental health diagnosis or perhaps some medication he was on. I mean, there's all sorts of things that we don't know yet. But the fact that he was sitting there frozen could mean that they will play some sort of like incapacity defense. After Yu's body was recovered, Chen was taken to the hospital. Saeed Dahl believes those records and other medical records will be of interest to both sides. They would definitely look at his medical records. And there's reporting that his hands were swollen, which leads to the fact you to believe that he was the one who committed that crime against his wife. Again, I think, it, could they say that maybe he was trying to fight off somebody else? You know, unlikely, unless they can show some sort of, you know, evidence that somebody else was in the home. But they will definitely be able to look into those medical records. You know, this is a crime at this point, and they can do everything to investigate and possibly, again, if there was something more mental going on there and did they treat him for that? Was there any kind of, you know, blackout that they were actually treating him for? That would help the defense if so. I'm glad that you brought up that swollen hand because that's something that I've seen two reports that his hand was swollen and he said something to the effect of, I hit my wife or I punched my wife, something similar to that. So does that count as an admittance of what he had done? Yes. I mean, if you are is confessing to the crime, that's definitely an admission that can be, um, you know, admitted in the court of law. Even with that confession, investigators will still dig into Chen and Yu's backgrounds, including their work at Google. And really, this case is gaining a lot of attention because of the serious nature of it, but also that both the victim and suspect worked at Google. I mean, that's a big name company. So I'm wondering if investigators could even go into their work life and take a look at some of that. Is that possible too? I think it is possible and really because they both worked there. So this idea of them trying to investigate what their relationship is like. If they were spending all day in the same Google building, let's say, they most likely interacted with each other. And what did coworkers see in that kind of inter interaction? Did they hear them arguing? Did they ever see her afraid of him? In that respect, the fact that they both worked at the same place, you're more likely to have uh, maybe Google pulled in and questioned around this. Because the couple worked at the same place, their personal relationship overlapped with their professional one. Saeed Dahl says that makes it likely investigators will do some deeper digging involving Google. I think there's a few ways we can see it. For one, we can see it in the respect of trying to collect evidence of what their relationship was like at work and whether or not this leads into this being a domestic violence situation. There's also some speculation that the alleged the killing, and if he were indeed the person who killed it, had something to do with Google doing layoffs. And if that, if indeed um, the husband was recently laid off, then they might ask the Google executive to kind of establish that. Uh, and, and perhaps even what was, how did the person, how did he receive that information? Was he upset? Again, kind of trying to build the motive. And also, uh, you know, this made big news in China as well. And uh, is the citizenship an issue? Like, did, was he here on a work visa? Then a layoff could be even more important. Like, was he subject to being, you know, deported as a result? And that, again, could have maybe ratcheted up um, why something like this happened. This is everything that prosecution would want to kind of flush out to establish their motive. Again, this is really in the beginning stages, all speculation of whether or not there, he was even laid off, whether or not his being laid off would affect whether or not he could stay in the state. But if it did, you know, certainly I think that's when we would see a Google executive be brought in. According to Saeed Dahl, the investigation is far from over.
they're going to really look into everything regarding him and his wife. As you know, we talked about, was there a pattern of this? Was there something that triggered this particular event? Um, you know, and, and really, hopefully, really methodically try to investigate it to kind of rule out any other suspects and also kind of um, preserve the evidence that they can. So if they do end up bringing this to trial, they're able to, um, you know, present it in a way to, for the prosecution to be able to get a conviction. As for a timeline, Chen's team will likely ask for more time before any major court dates are set. The defense always has a right to a speedy trial. That's a constitutional right. Most defendants um, kind of waive that right because they want to be able to have more time to present their, you know, to, to basically do their own investigation and come up with their own legal theories that might help their defense. But they do have a right to a speedy trial. Uh, and so they could always invoke it, but it's usually not uh, invoked in it. And it usually... Um, is delayed because of the, the defense asking for more time. Though we're still waiting for more details to come out, for now, the case appears to be domestic violence related. Sayag Dahl says that brings up an important reminder. Domestic violence, you know, occurs regardless of your financial situation, regardless of your education. Here are two people highly educated, seemingly successful, working at Google. It's, a dream job for many people, and yet you still have what looks like a domestic violence incident. And I think it's a good reminder that domestic violence can happen to anyone at any time. You know, one in three women in America, one in four men are victims of domestic violence in this country. And it's just a reminder that it, it doesn't spare you regardless of, um, you know, how good your job happens to be. And it, and it is a tragic um, thing whenever it does happen here. Chen is set to be arraigned on January 24th. Reporting for Long Crime, I'm Sierra Gillespie.